I will be providing some backstory I feel is relevant. I tend to overexplain, so I apologize in advance. Thanks in advance for reading. Beatrice and I have been like sisters since we were in elementary school. Our moms were friends too, even before we met. We were always like second daughters to each other's moms as well. Sadly, we lost her mom about two and a half years ago. Since Beatrice's oldest daughter was born 14 years ago, they've always told her three kids I am their aunt. It's also worth noting that before the past year and a half, Beatrice's ex-husband Jason and I got along fine. Also, before last year, I'd only ever missed one of each of the kids' parties. Beatrice and I had a falling out that was mostly my fault that lasted about a year. So I missed her oldest daughter's eighth birthday and her son's second. Jason's family had a small party for their youngest after Beatrice's mom died. Beatrice planned to do a bigger party when she felt more up to it and just never did. No one's fault. A year and a half ago, for reasons I'm still unclear on, Jason took the kids and moved back in with his mom. At first I was angry at Jason. Now admittedly, I'm also angry with Beatrice. I've tried to be supportive though. That year for Beatrice's youngest daughter's birthday, Beatrice bought the cake so she invited her family and friends. I even told her to double check with Jason that I could come because he won't speak to me at all. He said it was fine, so I went. Last year I asked Beatrice every other day or two leading up to her oldest daughter's birthday if she knew when and where her party would be. She said she didn't know exactly because Jason was throwing it, not her. I told her to let me know when she found out. She didn't. The day of my niece's birthday, I did babysit for another friend. If she'd called me, I'd have asked my mom to take her or gotten her an Uber or whatever I could do. Neither of us drive. My mom is usually willing to take her. Jason and his family won't. Jason lives around an hour from where Beatrice does too. A couple of weeks later, Beatrice asked if my mom could give her a ride to her son's birthday party. My mom said yes. I asked if we could go. Again, making sure Jason was okay with it too. They allowed us to come. On the way, Beatrice told me that Jason's mom had told her where her oldest child's party was the day of. She just didn't think her boyfriend at the time was wanted there. So she didn't go. I reiterated that I could have gotten her a ride. She reiterated that she really wanted her boyfriend to go. Then she brought up how I was babysitting that day. Her youngest daughter's birthday party later last year was without incident. Fast forward to my current situation. I asked Beatrice about her oldest daughter's birthday party. She told me the evening before that the party was the next afternoon. She needed a ride. I told her I'd get her there. The next day, I got to her house. I also text when I'm there. Her cousins who moved in last year car wasn't in the driveway. I thought maybe she had gone somewhere with her girlfriend though. About 10 minutes later, Beatrice told me she wasn't home. Sometimes she runs errands with her cousin, so I asked where she was, even though deep down I knew. She said going to my daughter's party. I asked why she wouldn't tell me. I bought a present for her daughter. She was like, I'm sorry I didn't know she was taking me. It was 45 minutes before the party by this point. I asked if she couldn't have invited us. She said, I didn't think you'd be able to find it. Later on, she sent me a picture of a drink she tried. I told her the way she'd treated me was crap and blocked her on Facebook. I didn't block her anywhere else. Yesterday, I unblocked her. I even sent new friend requests so she'd know I unblocked her. I haven't heard anything back. Tomorrow's her son's birthday. Originally, I was going to tell her I couldn't help her with the ride. I've since decided that's not fair. I feel like she owes me an apology. I don't want to be the one to reach out. I guess maybe the friendship is over again. Am I in the wrong? Should I reach out? It's also worth noting I went from being able to see the kids as pretty much weekly to now only at their parties if I get invited. Beatrice herself only saw them four times last year. The two times my mom took her to see them. Once when her brother took her to see them for Mother's Day. Once to buy school clothes. And I'm not sure how Beatrice got there. So it's not like I can see them any other day. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. You can feel however you feel. You don't need a right to be mad. But I think someone whose co-parent took the kids and moved away from her 
who only finds out about her kids' parties the day of or day before, and who is this wholly reliant on other people for transport to see her own kids. Sounds like she's barely hanging on to her own ability to see her kids. It's unrealistic and not particularly kind to expect her to also be managing your access to those kids and their parties. This sounds like you may be making something that's not about you, about you. It sounds like Jason is the primary parent, primary controller of access to the kids, and for unknown reasons, doesn't like you. If you want more access to the kids, work on making up with him. If you want what is best for the kids, and also to help your friend, spend some of this energy on helping get her into a more stable situation where she and her kids can see each other more. Comment two. Jason is the custodial parent, and it sounds like he doesn't want you having contact with his kids. It also sounds like Beatrice is not going to make a case with Jason for you to see the children. She barely sees them herself. In my humble opinion, you probably should back off and give up on having an anti-relationship with those children. Perhaps your mother can give you more insight into what happened that Beatrice has so little contact with her children. Are drugs or perhaps a prison sentence involved with any of you? Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for this update. So Beatrice's son's birthday came and went. I didn't hear a peep from her, not a text, nothing. I guess she found another ride, or maybe she didn't go at all. It's like I'm stuck in this loop where I'm always the one reaching out, trying to fix things. I'm tired of it. A few days after the birthday, I heard from Beatrice's cousin. She said Beatrice was upset because I didn't offer to help with the party. I couldn't believe it. After everything, she still expected me to come to her rescue. I felt like I was being taken for granted. Then, out of the blue, I got a call from Jason. He never calls me, so I knew it had to be something serious. He said Beatrice had been in an accident. Nothing life-threatening, but she was in the hospital with a broken leg. He asked if I could watch the kids for a couple of days. I was torn. On one hand, I was still hurt by Beatrice's actions, but on the other, those kids are like family to me. I agreed to help. It felt like the right thing to do, but I also knew this was gonna put me right back in the middle of their mess. The kids were quiet when I picked them up. They missed their mom, and I could tell they were worried. The next few days were a blur of school runs, meal prep, and trying to keep the kids' spirits up. Beatrice's cousin came by once, but she didn't offer to take the kids or help out. It was all on me. I didn't mind helping, but it was a lot to handle, especially with work and my own life to juggle. When Beatrice finally got out of the hospital, I thought maybe this would be a turning point for us. I hoped she'd see how much I'd done for her and her kids and that it would bring some kind of acknowledgement or appreciation. But when I went to visit her, she barely said thank you. Instead, she was more concerned about how her boyfriend hadn't visited her. I was frustrated and felt used. I decided then that I needed to set some boundaries. I told Beatrice I couldn't be her go-to person anymore. She got defensive, said I was abandoning her when she needed me the most. I tried to explain it wasn't about that, but she wouldn't listen. A week later, I found out through the grapevine that Beatrice had asked her cousin to move in with her to help out while she recovered. That stung. After all I'd done, she still turned to someone else. And then, the final straw. I found out that Beatrice had been planning her youngest daughter's birthday party and hadn't said a word to me about it. I was done. I realized that no matter what I did, it was never going to be enough for Beatrice. I was always going to be the backup plan, never the first choice. So I made the hard decision to step back from Beatrice and her family. It hurts, especially thinking about the kids, but I can't keep putting myself in this position. I need to look out for my own well-being. I guess sometimes you have to accept that no matter how much history you have with someone, things can change. It's a tough pill to swallow, but I'm learning to deal with it. Thanks for reading. For My family made me. They're living made. So I exposed my brother's girlfriend's scheme and secured my ticket to freedom. I feel like Cinderella in my own house, except it's with my own blood. I'm 16 year old female and I live with my older brother who is 19 years old and my single mother, who is 46 years old. Growing up, I believed that we had a great family dynamic in terms of workload, and we shared all the household chores equally. We set up a system where each of us would tackle the household chores on a weekly basis. One week it would be me, 
Then the next would be my brother. Sometimes my mother would help with the dishes, but she mainly cooked our meals whilst we did the menial tasks. Everything was fine until this year. My mom got into a new relationship. My brother started college. It started off fine. My mom was busy with work as she worked two jobs and sometimes she wouldn't come home as she was with her other partner. My brother was trying to weather the stress of starting university and I didn't mind doing some extra chores. I would have to cook meals and in return, my brother would usually wash the dishes. All of a sudden he stopped doing that as he had to deal with his work and I would have to wash and dry the dishes. Then I had to wash, dry and fold the clothes, clean the kitchen, vacuum and mop the floor, vacuum the stairs, which is a pain because it's carpeted, feed the dog, take the dog to go potty outside, walk the dog, clean the bathroom, clean the toilet, clean the shower drains, prepare school lunch for myself, prepare breakfast, go grocery shopping at Trezzaveder. What's even worse is that things such as walking the dog is supposedly my brother's responsibility. Whereas I dealt with the household chores, I would come home from school to see a messy kitchen and sometimes my mom would cook. But I'd rather she didn't as she never cleans up afterwards. There will be a mountain of unwashed clothes and dirty dishes in the sink. The trash in the bin will be piled up as nobody bothered to take it out. I would have to beg my mom or my brother to clean the dishes and offer them something in return. I would come home to an unwalked dog, and not only do I have to walk it, but I also have to spend a lot of time with him, as no one else pays him any attention. I understand my mom, she works two jobs and is incredibly tired. I also understand my brother, he's taking a mathematics major and I'm sure college is stressful. I just wish they could be a bit more empathetic and understanding. For example, I once cooked dinner and washed all the dishes. Then my brother finally came out of his room and ate. Instead of washing his own plate, which is the only one left, he would leave it at the sink for me to wash. It just makes me think I'm worthless and don't deserve time for myself. My mother's really busy on the other hand with work, but on the days she is off, she would go to the gym or spend time with her partner shopping or whatever. I would have to take days off of school just so I can clean the house. When I come home from school, my number one priority is to clean. I wish I even had the time to focus on my academics. I'm really burnt out and sometimes would just leave the whole house unclean. The garden is unkept with mold and moss growing as it's really damp where I live. My mother only ever tells me to do this or do that. And whenever I ask her why she doesn't ask my brother, she always says it's because I do it better. She acts loving a lot of the times, but she literally doesn't even care as long as I am physically healthy. I don't even want to get started with my brother. We used to be so close and shared everything. Ever since he started college, he became extremely closed off and cold. Every time I speak to him or ask him to do something small, he acts like as if I just asked him for $1 million. He won't even look up at me when I speak and ignores me 95% of the time. I'm really stressed out and I even had to get a therapist, which my mom thinks is unnecessary. I'm extremely burnt out and tired and I can't even spend time on myself or do any work like people my age do. I want to ask, how can I fix my relationship with them? I've already made it obvious, but they won't even bat an eye at me. And when I tell them I'm tired, they respond with an, I'm even more tired and I've got more work than you. I'm considering running away from home, perhaps through a scholarship to a boarding school in Canada where my aunt and cousins live. I've tried to go before, but my mom won't pay for the tuition, so I must get it through a scholarship. Otherwise, I really want to end it all. My relationship with them is really strained. To them, I'm just like a live-in maid. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I would have to take days off of school just so I can clean the house. When I come home from school, my number one priority is to clean. Do not sacrifice your future for these people. Go to school. Focus on your academics. Clean up after yourself and nobody else. You need to look out for yourself because nobody else is doing it. Stop cleaning up after your mother and your brother. Stop doing their laundry. It is time for a good old fashioned strike. And whatever you do, don't back down. In short, look after yourself and look after the dog. Everyone else involved is an adult and it is way past time that they start acting like it. Comment two, let the house get dirty then.
Clean your own mess and leave them to it. They live there too and shouldn't get away with doing nothing. When I was in college, I had my own entire apartment to keep clean and I had to cook for myself and clean up after myself and do all my own everything. I didn't live at home and I didn't live with roommates. So no, your brother doesn't have an excuse to be a lazy butt. Absolutely do not skip school just to clean. That's ridiculous. Finally, go talk to your aunt in Canada and see if she can help you move there. If you live with your aunt, you don't need a boarding school. You can just go to a regular one. Now for the update. Thanks for all the comments on my last post. Three days ago, my life took a turn for the worse. My mom announced she was getting married to her new partner, and guess who's expected to plan the wedding? Me, as if I didn't have enough on my plate already. My brother, on the other hand, brought home his college girlfriend without a heads up. The house was a mess, and there I was, uh, trying to make a good impression while juggling everything else. The next day, I found out my brother's girlfriend was actually the daughter of my mom's boss. Talk about a tangled web. She was nice enough, but she had this way of subtly pointing out how everything I did was just slightly off. It was like she was trying to make me look bad in front of my brother and mom. And it worked. My mom started criticizing me more. My brother was too smitten to notice. But then, the girlfriend made a mistake. She accidentally sent a text to me instead of my brother, bragging about how she was only using him to secure a position at my mom's workplace. I was furious, but I saw an opportunity. I forwarded the message to my mom's boss, and let's just say the fallout was spectacular. My brother broke up with her, and my mom's boss was so grateful for the heads up that he offered me a part-time job at his company, which would pay enough to cover my boarding school tuition. The day after, my mom's partner came over, and I overheard him on the phone talking about moving his own kids into our house after the wedding. That was the last straw. I confronted my mom, told her everything I'd been feeling, and about the job offer. I expected her to be furious, but instead, she broke down. She admitted she'd been so wrapped up in her own happiness that she'd neglected mine. In the end, my mom called off the wedding, realizing she'd almost married a man who didn't care about her family. My brother apologized for being so distant and promised to pull his weight around the house. And me? I'm still planning to go to that boarding school in Canada but now I'm leaving on better terms. Thanks for reading. My boyfriend dumps me over Pokemon Go. Jealousy. So I prove my innocence and make him watch as I become the top player in town without him. I have played Pokemon Go on and off for years. I go through phases of absolutely loving the game and playing nonstop every single day to not touching it for months. But I always come back to it for the people that have never played. Your friends in game are basically there to send gifts to and fight battles with. You can't message one another, can't really interact much outside of sending each other these gifts back and forth every day. I've got a lot of friends on Pokemon Go that I've added from the various Pokemon Go subreddits, and we each send each other gifts back and forth. You can reach certain levels of friendship depending on how long you interact with each other. Anyway, explanation aside, the other day I was at my boyfriend's house and was playing Pokemon Go and received a gift from one of the friends I have. I got excited because I saw we only had one more day to go until we unlocked best friends, the highest level. My boyfriend asked what I was so excited about, so I showed him. He doesn't play, so I was explaining what having the friend actually means. When I told him I was one day away from the best friend status, his face just dropped and he got all quiet. I didn't really know what was up, so I sort of brushed over it a little and kept talking about my game. I'm not very socially aware, so that's my bad. He waited until I stopped talking, then asked me why I'd be talking to this guy every day for 90 days straight. I was taken aback, so I laughed a little and asked, are you being for real? But he looked dead serious and genuinely looked angry. So I tried to explain that there's no messaging system in Pokemon Go. I don't know the guy. He's not even from the same continent as me, and we've never exchanged a word with each other. We just gift each other for the items and the XP. He was not having it and started to accuse me of using Pokemon Go as a way to find men to cheat on him with. He said I've got no reason to talk to these men. I kept trying to show him there was no way to talk with anyone, and even offered him my phone, but 
He was just getting more and more agitated, and he quickly started yelling about it, going red in the face. This continued for another five or so minutes until he stormed out downstairs and drove off. I waited around for about an hour. He didn't come home, so I left because I didn't want to just sit at his house alone. I tried messaging him. He didn't respond for the rest of the day. That was all yesterday. Today he sent me a message basically telling me he doesn't think he wants to be in this relationship because I've proven myself as being two-faced, secretive, and a cheat. He said he didn't believe me, maybe bad of me, but I sent him screenshots of me Googling, can you message on Pokemon Go? And the results obviously saying no. This riled him up more. He called me some more names and then hasn't opened any of my messages to him since then. It seems like he's actually going to end the relationship over this. And I'm honestly at a bit of a loss for what to do. I don't want to keep reaching out and bothering him, but I don't want to break up over something that physically cannot be true. Can I do anything? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, take this as a sign of how he could deal with bigger issues in the future. He isn't even taking the time to figure out what actually happened. He isn't taking the time to listen to what you have to say. Do you really want a bigger issue to show up and have him deal with it like this? Comment two. Sounds like he has some issues to work out if that's his reaction to Pokemon Go. Honestly, a good Go community might yield more fruitful relationships. And if being best friends on Go means you're committed to them, then my group is just a big old polycule, I guess. Now for the update. Thanks for sticking around for more of my drama. So, after my boyfriend accused me of cheating through Pokemon Go, things just spiraled. I thought he'd cool off, but nope. He started telling our friends that I was sneaking around. I couldn't believe it. I mean, we've been together for two years and he's just going to throw it all away over a game? It's ridiculous. But then, my so-called best friend, who I've known since middle school, actually believed him. She confronted me, saying she was disappointed in me. I tried to explain, but she just shook her head and said, she needed to rethink our friendship. Can you believe that? Over a game. And it didn't stop there. My boyfriend's sister, who I always thought liked me, sent me this long text about how I should be ashamed and that her brother deserves better. I was fuming. I wanted to scream at all of them, but I didn't. I just replied with a simple, you're wrong, and left it at that. In the middle of all this, I got a notification from Pokemon Go. It was the guy the one from the other continent, we had finally reached best friend's status. It was supposed to be a happy moment, but it just felt empty. Ironic, right? Then, out of nowhere, my boyfriend shows up at my place. He's got this look on his face, like he's made a huge decision. He tells me he's sorry, that he overreacted, and he wants to make things right. I should have been relieved, but I wasn't. I was just tired, tired of the drama, the accusations, the lack of trust, but I let him in. We talked and he promised to clear things up with our friends and his sister, but the damage was done. Our friends were split, some still siding with him, thinking I had somehow manipulated the situation. And his sister, she never apologized, just went on like nothing happened. A few days later, my boyfriend's car got keyed big, ugly scratches all down the side. He was convinced it was the guy from Pokemon Go that I had somehow put him up to it. I couldn't believe it. We were back to square one. I tried to reason with him, but he was adamant. He filed the police report and everything. I felt like I was in some twisted reality show where every move I made just added fuel to the fire. I wanted to walk away from it all, but I didn't. I stayed trying to fix things, trying to prove my innocence. And that's where I'm at now, still with my boyfriend, still in this mess of a situation, and still playing Pokemon Go. It's like I'm stuck in this loop, and I can't get out. I know I should leave, but I don't. I just keep hoping things will get better, but deep down I know they won't. Thanks for reading. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.